Ah, recording a video. That's what it says. Ah, uh, yes, in this effect, for a purpose, uh, Piro has made a free will video out of nowhere. Like, you know, the conversation sort of died down. He sort of really doesn't keep up with anybody's videos, doesn't really watch them. And then he just makes some kind of video where he just says a lot of crap and then forces people to go back to square one and explain the basics to him. And it's pretty annoying. So anyway, <laughs> let's do that. Um, look, free is a stupid word to use in connection with what's going on inside our brain. Free is just kind of a silly word. I mean, the more important word are the restrictions, the things that are controlling. That's the key word here. Whether we have an uncontrolled will, whether our will is at liberty to do whatever the hell it wants, whatever that is, whatever a will is. And that's the... That's, that's the dysfunction in this conversation. It's like having a conversation and translating it into Teletubby. And everything turns into porridge, 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 porridge. And it doesn't make any sense because people are running from real words, r running from real concepts um, uh, that they don't like, the words they don't like. And they replace them with the little fairy words, a little spirit and angel and hope and all this other bibble babble that doesn't have anything to do with anything real. It just has to do with delusions that comfort one of these guys. One of that guy over there. That that one. Well anyway, the basic idea is is that your brain let's let's just say this is let's just use this as a metaphor. It could be eight, it could be sixteen. Let's just say there's four software programs orange green blue black and they're running inside your brain from the initiation of your existence whatever that is and um, they are programmed independently by the experience each one in a little bit of a different way because it's filtering for different things and those four programs basically throughout your life become more and more different because they are filtering the world differently and uh, so they, they're, they, they become, you know, one's depressive and one's happy and one's aggressive and one's passive and however you want to describe these with general words. But like I said, these colors things works as good as any. They all have a tint, a tinge to them. They'll all be stronger or weaker depending on what circumstance they're in. If you dunk this in water, when some colors will be lighter than others, darker than others. If you do different things, reflect the light off of it, certain ones will show up brighter than others. So depending on what the environment's doing, certain ones of these personalities will be more engaged, more st stronger, these, these programs. So they even call them personalities. Let's call them pro what they are, which is programs. They're associations, event, they're reaction, action, reaction. It's fucking stink bugs. <laughs> oh man! Um, now each one of my programs had a different reaction to that stink bug. One just said it's just a bug, asshole. The other one was like, ah, you know, standing on the chair. Um, you know, the other one is just, oh, life is so fucking stupid. These damn bugs, you know. Uh, you know, each one was having an attitude, a reaction, um, distinct to its now developing pers pers personality. Because now I'm kind of aged, and as you're more aged, these distinctions are pretty broad and uh, the, the, the mixture of this nonsense is what you end up being because they're basically trying to trip each other trying to like one program says ah, I'm way too sensitive I gotta cut that green guy down he's too he's too Gaia too wussy and so he's always trying to like in his little reactionary world the reactions are always um, y you know the scheme of the program the objective of the program is to be dominant and the way to get those ideas dominant is to obviously make the other guys less dominant and he can throw into the the mixture into the into the reactionary mixture um, ideas and concepts to disable the other guy so if you're too horny for something like say something seductive and there's some program in there that's saying seductive is bad seductive is bad then you'll you, that seductive is bad program will, will, can throw nonsense into your head like uh, women carry diseases or, or you know all she wants to do is steal your money and shit on your head um, or some kind of thing like that and you can disable the seduction you can break it down 
and that's the kind of arguments that are going on inside your head with these programs. But none of these programs are in control. None of these programs have any freedom. No piece of you is doing anything. Um, the fight that's taking place is is the fight. This is the, where it's at. It, it, it's all dependent on where, what tools they have. Depends the outcome. Okay, if one of them hasn't acquired chainsaw knowledge, then yeah, he can't cut the other guy's legs off with the chainsaw and win. And so he won't win. And, and it's that kind of just basic fact. There's just there's just nothing built inside of us that does any kind of um, uh, true choosing. These are fake and phony words. They don't have anything to do with our reality. They're they're contrivances of some of these willy thingies, some of these people, well that guy over there, is, that's the way to do it, that guy, um, you know, has, has fucked with you and um, made you think, uh, you know, that you're, that there's some you in here. I mean, that's even where we're going back to the beginning, because there's no you, all right? There, there isn't. There's no I, there's no me, there's no, there's none of that thing, there's not a thing that's sitting there and actually weighing something, there's a scale inside my brain and there's experiences being weighed. I don't get to see any of that. All I see is the outcome. I have to have a program in my head. One of these idiots, maybe the black guy, because he's pretty smart, has to actually have had, had, had thought of the concept, the concept of um, actually manipulating your consciousness and manipulating your thought patterns has to actually be one of the programs running in here. Manipulation program has to actually be one that you've acquired, that you've learned through association, through experience, through knowledge, that you can actually have an idea and if you think about it, it, you can gain some momentum and you can you can rise it to the surface if you think about it enough, you know? That's one of your programs learned how to do that. It learned how to throw the baseball into the strike zone. All right? And that's all this is. Different programs with different skills at manipulating your whole general psychology um, and in the end having you behave a certain way. So one of these software programs might be able to declare victory in some circumstance. <laughs> um, but that's all. There's no you that can declare it. You can't take credit for anything that you are, because everything that you are is built out of these programs, these knowledge bases, these experiential bases, uh, practice, uh, acquisition. All right, you have acquired a skill. You don't. You don't. Um, you don't just manifest it, and you certainly can't choose it. Once it's built into you, there's no choicing being going on anymore. There's just a clinical weighing of, of, of the strength of ideas and notions and disposition at a time, whether you're underwater or not. And one of these asshole programs is going to decide what you're going to do, um, basically. Um, yeah, and then if you get if you take this lower to the physics level, then you're really cooked, okay? Because then you really understand that this is um, a bunch of energy um, moving through eddies in a stream, and they they obey a physics. And although it looks incredibly nuanced, you throw a stick in the eddy in the stream, and it seems like there's like like who knows where's it's going to go. No, it has a predictable path. We just don't have the knowledge to predict it. But it's a predictable outcome. Where the stick enters, where it is, how much displacement, all these things will decide exactly where that stick ends up. And you can run that experiment over and over and over, and you'll always get the same outcome, starting with the same initial circumstance. Um, there's just nothing else that can happen but what will happen. And it will happen because it's programming. There is no you. There are programs running that defined you, all right? And there's no enigma around these words of freedom and choice. Um, they're stupid words invented by stupid people, just like God and Jehovah and Mohammed. These are all religious words, all right? These aren't, these aren't logic words. These aren't uh, sense words. These aren't uh, smart words. These aren't informed words. These aren't educated words. They're nonsense words, 
uh, you know, your little randoms and your spontaneouses. Um, these aren't words we, uh, we we can certainly use them. But we shouldn't use them seriously. We should use them as metaphors for some kind of diluted perception that we all commonly experience um, the illusion of. But let's all understand behind that bad language that we're going to use. Um, we got to make sure the correct understanding is behind that, that we're not talking metaphor, that we're talking reality, or vice versa. <coughs> um, so is there anything else? Yeah, I didn't, I've didn't. i almost made the video, but we will play his video just because it was just so obnoxiously, aggressively nonsensical. Hi, this is a little rant because people are talking about free will again and, you know, and uh, been talking about this for four or five years or something on, on here. And, you know, I, I've said something that I'm getting tired of it not being taken into account. I say that the question of free will and unfree will is is not the question. Of course it's not free. Nothing's unfettered. The idea you... Well, I think that's sort of significant, okay? If you're just going to say that nothing's unfree, then you're conceding that the word is bogus, that it's a nonsense word, that there's no such thing as a, a liberated will, all right? It's just not. There's, it, it just doesn't exist. It's, it's, a, it's a nonsensical concept, and so concede that it's a nonsensical concept, that we're commonly using language that has no applicability to the reality here. It has no relevance to the actual forces. It's like talking about wind in space, all right, and how the planets are being blown. Uh, it, these metaphors are garbage. Um, you know, I, I mean, it, it, you know, push down force and we call that gravity or something. I mean some kind of you know like the, the great hand that pushes the universe together or some kind of I mean this is just this is not useful and we ought to discount it because you can't really progress if you're going to keep using bad language especially when that bad language doesn't come with the automatic knowledge that this person's actually talking in metaphor and isn't talking complete bullshit it's like somebody using an Adam and Eve metaphor and somebody saying literally that we evolved from Adam and Eve. Jeez, big difference. Think three and you go, it has no restrictions. Well, everything in the universe has some restrictions, so nothing's free in that. Yeah, the point is, is it's all restriction. It's all made out of a deterministic pattern of, of bits and bytes. That it's reflexes. Programmed reflexes not anything else that's all there is programmed reflexes they're programs they rewrite each other greeny tries to rewrite bluey and bluey tries to sabotage uh, uh, orange they're all they, they may be able to screw with the programming in terms of screwing with each other but they're just screwing with programming they're just rewriting software and it's always at any one moment a software pattern it, it it doesn't have any other choice from any circumstance in. It's going to have a circumstance out. There isn't any choice of circumstance out. It's completely controlled. So it's completely opposite of anything that has anything to do with the word free. Sense and things, you know, and our opposite go together like a connection and a separation. If you have two charged spheres. Uh, immersed in a conductive gas, uh, and they're three feet apart. The, the they're separated by three feet of gas. They're also connected by that. Um, but again, there's no in between here. Okay, there isn't. It, there's all control. There is no non-control. There's no entity. There's no thing pushing anything one way or the other. There's no conscience. There's no. There's no, none of that crap. They're programs, and they're reactive programs, and they will react specifically based on a deterministic chain of programming. And there's no any nuance here. There's no room for any nuance of perception. You're imposing it. And even your example, again, is a nuance of perception. All right, there is a specific distance between the things. There's a specific charges being exchanged. There's no. There's no variability in it. It is made of specific variables, and those specific variables will dictate when there'll be a discharge across those two plates. Right, and so sometimes things in their opposite, you know, 
Christian God and Satan, they're not really opposites at the opposite ends of everything, as opposite as it could be. No, they're two poles of Christianity. Uh, well, guess what? Two poles happen to be something we consider opposites, which are on opposite ends of a sphere. You can't get further away, right? So that's the opposite. You can't get further away without getting closer. Well, I guess that makes it the opposite point. So again, just play games with frickin' words um, to uh, create the illusion that, uh, you know, negative one and positive one can't be considered... Um, uh, exact opposite reflections of each other, or some other kind of notion like that. Just play word games to muddy the freaking water. Why? To satisfy your little greenie program that is such a wuss and can't take reality straight. He's always got to intoxicate it. He's got to dilute it and make it a pretty color and then flavor it and then give it an odor and then pop a daisy in it. Because he can't drink fucking truth. You cannot, and then people are like, I know what you're thinking. When I think willpower, to me, it's the same idea as, as free will. It's just the terms. No, it's not. See, things can generate power that aren't free, like the engine in your... Uh, generate. Generate power. Nothing generates power without there being fuel and ignition and a mechanics that runs it and forces the... Forces the, the outcome through whatever the funnel of its function is all right and that's the truth of it again it's all deterministic the engine doesn't spontaneously start nothing spontaneously happens and no action provoked inside of your brain um, uh, manifests inside of your body's action all right is spontaneously generated all right it's all following uh, cascades of cause and effect, little dominoes dropping all over the place. Dominoes in, dominoes 10 years old in spirals, Eddie's spinning, all kinds of stuff, and there will be uh, an outcome domino, and one will hit the switch that says, move your fucking foot, and you'll move your fucking foot. Car, you don't consider that free just because it can generate power. It is a separate question. The problem is, you're stuck on the whole concept as well. You can't get this idea of things Nothing is, your concept of free is broken. No, your concept of language and, and, and uh, realistic wor and real words is broken. If these words are broken, they can't be applied to the human condition. They can't be applied to any condition. Okay, they're words that desperate people gravitate to. Words of spirit and strength and, and you know, whatever, holiness <laughs> or whatever, mystical, mushy, um, Babel. That's all this garbage is. It has no use to anyone who wants to describe reality. Your concept of free is broken. So you're asking this question that only arises because of the concept of free. The real issue of will is are there more than one possible future? Well, that's a silly question, isn't it? If you're going to get realistic here, there's not more than one possible future if you have a controlled pre-circumstance. Every moment is a circumstance. Frozen, that moment's a circumstance. And it doesn't matter, you, that circumstance will always dictate an outcome. You can do it over and over and over and always have the same outcome. Damn it, if this isn't irritating. Well, that was actually an interesting phone call. Um, I've never been, it was a marketing company, and they're actually paying people, okay, to show up at some place, and then, you know, 100 bucks if you go, just so, you know, you can go through some whatever, <laughs> what do you call those, little obstacle courses of, well, what do you think of this tissue, what do you think this smells like, um, yeah, too bad, yeah, but I'm not doing it, but yeah, I mean, it's good, you know, easy 100 bucks, I would imagine, better than working, right, um, so, yeah, I should have, but I'm just, I'm not, no, I'm not going to Morse now. Forget that. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so uh, on with the show. And, specifically, can we do anything to affect navigation between the possibilities? That's the question. Yeah, anything to affect navigation between the possibilities that you've conceded exist that don't exist. And what would those possibilities, let's say those possibilities existed, what would they be made out of? What would change the circumstance? The circumstance is a frozen circumstance in time. 
um, it has a, st a constituent. The software is in a certain. It's at a certain bit point in the in, in its in its progression, <laughs> and now you're going to influence it in some way that you're going to call free or choice or some other crap. And how is it going to be anything else but chaos? What force exactly knows exactly what little little goober to change in, in the programming? The cascade of dominoes. What, what what what? How how are they manipulating these this cascade of programming programmed dominoes um, in, in some sort of beneficial way? I mean, all all the only thing you can come up with is some god that knows exactly who you are and what you are and what you really want to be. Or some kind of bullshit notion like that, and it's all of a sudden going to fiddle with you. No, the only thing that can happen is some meme, an idea in your head, is rolling around in there, and it'll say to you, be a good guy. Or it'll do something else, and it has, it actually knows how to throw a strike, though. It's not just saying empty words, it's saying words that you've developed over time to mean something. You've become emotionally connected to them. You know that Ebenezer Scrooge was a good guy in the end. Alright, so he really sucked, but he was really good at the end. Or, you know, some other little hero crap. You know, I'm going to hit the home run for the, you know, save the town. Or whatever bullshit's in your head. And it's got this little thing running in there, this little dopey meme of good, 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 good. And it's going to try to good, it's going to try to throw a good bomb onto that um, uh, static programming and, and make you good. But all you're doing is reprogramming yourself with ideas. Ideas are reprogramming you. And I don't see how the concept of free even comes into that. Free to choose. No, you're not even free to choose. You exert power. It's a, it, it, the car, car energy exert. Well, this is the idiotic part. You exert power. I mean, duh. You know, I take my fist and I throw it at your somewhere in the range of your nose eye position. Um, yes, I exerted power. Duh. It's not about how the, the, the fist got to your face. It's about, I mean, it's not the, about the fact that the fist gets to your face. It's about what made the fist get to your face. What, what um, <laughs> programming, what string of action-reaction create the need for it to happen? Hmm. The, the 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 psychological need. Why why did one of these guys, you know, the, this probably that black guy, um, want to go b bash you? It's power. It doesn't mean the car is going to move forward. Maybe it's not in gear, or maybe it's crashed into a wall. Or oh God, you're just mixing metaphors all over the place. You're talking about end effects instead of talking about preconditions. I mean, uh, this is idiotic. You're going to call it free will because, uh, yeah, maybe you have a brain tumor? I mean, what, what, what's the point of doing that? That's, that doesn't make it free will. That doesn't make it choice. You got a brain tumor, now it's choice? Because you did something different? Because you have a condition that breaks your brain? <sighs> Amazing. Amazing drivel. It's a separate question. The flow of power, and if if there's a power that should be named will, and then getting down to what flow of power again? See, this is just such destructive language. This is just like saying it's just like walking into a physics or a chemistry or a biology class and starting talking about God's soul. I mean, Jesus' soul, or you know, wine is blood, or you know, this is these are metaphors and and verbiage that has no place in a conversation between people who want to describe the truth what kind of power is that like there's power in radio waves there's a power in uh, radiated off of the sun and there's a power radiated from yeah, yeah again you're talking about outcomes again talk about the internal mechanism that produces it right what produced the radio wave oh that's right a mechanism a solid, non-choice producing mechanism. The same is with the sun. The sun is not choosing and saying, I'm going to throw a big spot at them. No, it's not doing that. You know, a fire. And we could ask, fire. The word fire. You don't say, fire doesn't exist because it's really photons. It's really infrared photons that you're feeling. Oh, 
God. We're not talking about, what, again, you're back to what we're, you're feeling. And every other intelligent person on earth knows the fire exists over there. All right? They don't feel just the residue. All right? If I sit behind a car, a car and I feel the exhaust, I know it's a car. I know it has an engine. I know there's a whole bunch more going on than a bunch of hot gas coming out of its ass. All right? Because I'm smart. Because I've been educated and informed. So I don't keep reacting to things based on what's touching me. I can actually, I can actually close my eyes and still see the frickin' car. All right? That's how brilliant I am. I can actually know there's a still a car there when my eyes are closed. Will you quit talking as if everything has to do with what touches you personally? Oh, God. You know, the sun doesn't really exist because it's not the sun. It's a, right. We, we, we give those names and we keep investigating and we unify later on. We find out, oh my God, these things are related. <laughs> non sequitur much what the fuck much okay so the question with will is is there some force helping us navigate actual possibilities right oh yeah that's right is there some force little forcey worsey right exactly is there something manipulating our dominoes besides our dominoes the arrangement of our dominoes is there something besides the eddy in the water spinning the stick and no, there isn't. And by the way, the willpower thing, it's not even mine. It's its a Nietzschean thing. This is the question. Oh, well, who cares? I don't care if it's a George thing or a Robert thing or a Bizbob thing. I don't give a fuck whose thing it is. It's crap. Free and unfree will. You know, in the moment I read that, and I'm not even agreeing with everything else I'm reading in the book at the time. And I read that and I go, wow, that's a really good point. And from that moment on... Uh, well, it's too bad you didn't articulate the good point because I didn't recognize a good point anywhere in this fucking video. I have never forgotten that aspect of the question. That, that, you keep saying the that as if there's a that somewhere here. I don't see no frickin' that. Question of will. I don't know how you guys... 100% of you can ignore the fundamental importance of that point to this question. Oh, <laughs> that again, the that point. Damn, I wish I knew what the that was. Damn. For four or five years, I don't, I don't get it. You want to be stuck. Yeah, you want to play games with the truth. That's all that can be concluded here, right? Because you're going to be this emphatic that somebody else has got it wrong when you're obviously the one fucking destroying any kind of logical, rational foundation for understanding what a human being is. A human being is not a will machine in terms of any kind of uh, liberality to be this or to be that or to be that, that, that. No, he's a programmed device. He's a quacking duck. All right? He's not a, he's not that thing. He's not a, a, a head poppy up and down thingy. He's not a booble, booble, booble. He's not a you know, gibber machine, he's not a dishwasher, all right, he's this thing that does what humans do, okay, which is get programmed through their life, a conditioning, they gain a knowledge base, those words are tied to their emotions and their feelings and their experiences in usually a rationally cohesive way, and they end up having a, a behavior psychology, and that behavior psychology confronted with the, uh, being identical will behave in a way that is completely predictable with enough knowledge. In an enigma. I mean, I there like no enigmas, enigma. but I love trying to crack them open in that feeling. <clears throat> yeah, well, this one's cracked, okay? And it's cracked just by getting rid of the nonsense language. Get rid of the word free because it's bullshit. Um, get rid of the word choice because it's bullshit. Because there is no choice. The circumstance chooses. The programming chooses. The dominoes choose. The universe doesn't have choices in it. It has things moving and they will do what they're going to goddamn do. And there's no choice involved. And it, sometimes it just seems like people are like, no, I like it because it's an enigma. I don't want it to be answered. I want to be able to tell this enigma. Some people, yeah, I mean, it just seems like you're exactly one of those some people. So some people who are some people shouldn't refer to them, shouldn't refer to others as some people when they are the fucking some people. It's like an alien calling the aliens aliens. 
Doesn't really make much fucking sense. You're one of the fucking aliens, retard. This story to my grandkids, and if I solve it, I won't be able to tell. I'll waste all the time I'm developing the story. Again, belittle the people that are actually being rational while you're being preposterously irrational in your rhetoric, in your jargon, in your verbiage. You're the one using the holy words, jackass. All right, you're using the broken language to protect uh, uh, preposterous notions, idiotic notions, nonsensical notions, childish notions, infantile notions, babbly. Teletubby notions of reality. It isn't porridge, porridge. It's goddamn control all over the fucking place. There is no uncontrol. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. I believe we're done. <laughs> I believe that was Orange that did that. I don't know. I think it was pretty much Orange's fault. And like I said, the rest of us are piled on top of each other. So, you know, unfortunately, you know, we get to slander each other. Like, blue can do something and make it look like green did it. Yeah. And it always happens like that. Because that's how these this whole battle of memes and want and need and insecurity and ego and all these little programming nuances are blending together and uh, duking it out to create what will be the manifestation that you call you. Okay? You is just the fart. Okay? The gas is put together inside your guts, and you know there's no magic in there. There's no little finger wiggling the little the little gas molecules to say, oh, I'm going to make it a particularly stinky fart. No, you know it's just fucking biology that makes the gas pop out of your ass. Okay? And it's the same kind of mechanism that makes these words fly out of my fucking mouth. Anyway, I think we have a video completed. Thank you very much. Please come again. 43 of you.